believe you were attached uh, to the project uh, fairly early. What was it about it that it appealed to you and made you want to be a part of it? Um, it just, you know, just screamed a lot of nostalgia for me, you know, the genre, um, the sort of thrill, the sort of, you know, intense sort of take the audience out of their comfort zone and put them somewhere else. You know, that whole ingredient palette was what, it, uh, um, you know, really excited me. You know, there's a family dynamic and there's a real tension dynamic. You know me, I like to make films that are never the same. I like to, you know, spread, uh, uh, and I hadn't made a film like this, so I was really, you know, attracted to it. The writing of the script is good, and, and I really wanted to work with Bolt. Um, I actually took the film to Bolt and said, hey, I want you to make this, would you please play? And he was like, yeah, I'd love to, and you know, and that's where this, this started to, to come together. Um, I'm really proud of it. It's, uh, I think it's really well executed, I believe, and hopefully audiences just go along for the ride. You just mentioned that you really haven't done anything like this before and that you like changing it up. That's true. That's a constant in your career to not be constant. And <laughs> so let's talk about your character then. What kind of a man is Dr. Nate Daniel? You know, he's definitely in these films not the hero. He's not the guy that's like, oh man, he knows how to handle himself. He's going to be okay. This is a, a, a man that's actually broken by, by the loss of his wife and the loss of the, mother's, the mother of his children. And, and their relationship, I mean, his, him and his kids, that relationship is, is fractured at the beginning of this movie. Nate is no fighter. You know, and even for his family, I guess he's kind of guilty of giving up after his wife has died. So there's definitely this broken man feeling of Nate when you meet him. And I think what they go through is extraordinary, but actually helps repair the relationship that has been, like I said, fractured and repairs him. Even though he gets almost shred to pieces, I think he comes back a much stronger man. Um, you're right, and the fact that he's not perfect and he's not the typical hero makes us actually relate to him more. What, did, what, what do you like uh, about him? Um, I, I liked that, you know, from a character perspective, it was complex for me to try and pull this together so that he is relatable. Um, he's a dad. And he is the sort of the guy that he's not sure what he's going to do next, but he'll just he'll do what he has to. And I really, you know, wanted to bring that alive. And Bolton and I, you know, we sort of marked the territory of the script where, you know, this was where he was most fragile versus where he's most triumphant. Um, and that balance was really important. I also liked that, you know, there was going to be this really intricate, you know, battle between the beast as a lion and the beast that is the man. And, you know, the technicalities of making this film were challenging, you know, in terms of how, you know, the actual mechanics of a lion versus a man, what that felt like and looked like, but also the sort of symbolic, you know, fight for two characters that essentially are living on opposite sides. You know, th this, the lion has been ripped from its family and therefore fearful for, any, for its life and will fight for its territory. And, you know, Nate is the same, you know, he's mourning. Uh, he may lose his daughters, not only, you know, in terms of their love for him, but also in actuality with this threat. So that fight is really, you know, it's like a real battle. Uh, so I enjoyed, you know, reading the script, thinking how we pull this together. By the way, you look really convincing there as a doctor, I have to say, under uh, <laughs> difficult circumstances. How did you prepare the role? Uh, it was just, you know, you know, Baltazar is very much, you know, a guy who wants to see it in the camera. He doesn't want to fake it. So we had a lot of preparation, actually. Um, so a lot of um, consultation with the people that, you know, that do this for a living, not fight lions, but, you know, doctors and whatnot and uh, poachers and not poachers, but anti-poaching teams. We had to do a lot of understanding of what this reality looks like. Um, obviously, it's a film, yeah, and some things, you know, we took artistic license for, but 
We did a lot of research. Uh, we did a lot of research and, and there was a lot of prep, a lot of sitting around with the script, talking through things, um, lots of rehearsal. I have to say, um, I, the relationship between the father and the two daughters really works very well. And there were two wonderful and then young, talented actresses there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what can you say about uh, Ayana and Leah, I thought they were brilliant as Meredith and Nora. Yeah, they were really great to work with. Ayana and Leah both were just professionals, um, fun to be around, open-hearted, and, you know, took the work really seriously. And, you know, the good news is that we got along really well and we became a little family anyway, you know, we really did because we found ourselves spending long periods of time together, and we got to know each other a little bit. And I think some of that really transferred onto the screen. You know, we sometimes the lines between action and cut just blurred because we were really a sort of like um, a family unit. And it was really important for us to textualize that for the audience because it is a big spine of the film. You know, you want them to survive this line, but you also want them to patch their relationship up. In a way, the that fight to survive the line is a metaphor for what that family is going through internally, right? Yeah, there are definitely those, those metaphors, you know, you know, death is a beast, you know, and it will come and it might not tell you when and it's frightening and scary, but you have to, you know, you have to go through that. Everyone probably has to. And it's kind of like a bit of a metaphor with with the with the lion who is also scared and longing and and wants to um, want safety like everyone else does. I love that also your relationship with Charlotte's character, who played your best friend in the movie and the manager of this game reserve they visit. I thought that was a, a really nice relationship with him. You can saw a bit of humor there too. <laughs> Yeah, no, Shoto's great to work with. He's very, very funny in real life. But also, you know, he gave us a sense, uh, a character that, you know, I think audience, uh, you know, sort of gravitate to. He is a good friend of the, their family. He knew their mom when she was younger. And, you know, n you know I probably introduced Nate to um, their mom, Amakhle. And he's... Um, He's a good guy, yeah. We got to play a little bit, maybe a little bit of humour. Not much, but, you know, it was definitely seeded. Speaking of playing a little bit, I love that scene at the beginning of the movie when the two of you are drinking, because your character kind of shows this more vulnerable side there. Yeah, there is definitely, you know, where you see that something's not right with Nate. You know, he's not quite together there. You know, he got gets a little drunk and gets a little emotional, and I think he's dealing with stuff there. He's just hasn't done, you know. Um, Africa or traveling to somewhere that makes you feel a little bit, you know, you're not really uh, known, you don't know the surroundings as well, can make you feel vulnerable for sure. And I felt that that was something we sort of played that even though Africa is a place of fond memories for, for Nate, this is where he feels vulnerable. Let's talk a bit more about that because the movie um, takes place in South Africa, and it was shot there, which is quite extraordinary. Uh, how was that experience for you? I love working in South Africa. I, I've worked there a few times, and it's a beautiful part of the world. They call it God's country. That's what South Africans refer it to, and, and you can see why, because it's just, like, really stunning. In the movie, you know, the, the, the environment is one of the big characters in the film, so... It was important that we went there and that we um, showed, you know, this part of, this, of the world in its, in its entirety and its glory. The light for filmmaking is just beautiful there and that was really captured beautifully by the cinematographer, Philippe, and, uh, you know, we, we were very fortunate. It was a bit like uh, a little camp group, the crew, you know, because it was quite a big crew, but, you know, we were in the middle of nowhere, so we became quite close. Speaking of the filmmaking, you mentioned earlier that you brought the script to Balt. Uh, why was um, Balt Komaku the director of your choice for this project? 
You know, the Bolt has an incredible sort of way to, you know, put the audience in the seat of, of, of the people in the films. He's done survival films in the past and they've all been thrilling to watch. They just, you know, you really get a sense of the reality of what we're going through. And I felt that this script, the bad version of it, would, um, would not pay attention to what this would actually feel like. The good version is what we end up doing, where we're really layering what this feels like, um, how scary it is, um, and how unpredictable this can be, how isolating it is, and how tense it is. So, you know, Bolt knows how to, you know, layer those things in a realistic way. You know, I was really keen for audience not, I don't want audience to roll their eyes and go, that would never happen. I mean, obviously it's a movie, but I, we wanted to really pay attention to just the actuality. Following up on what you're saying, Bolt wants it to be real. Not only are you shooting in South Africa, but he has a way of shooting with long takes that really immerses the audience into the experience, right? Yeah, that was, um, you know, part of his whole sort of pitch of how he wants to do this is that, you know, let's keep the camera flowing so the audience don't get a sense of this is a movie. They're actually feeling like they're on this experience with us. Uh, it's a really interesting technique, but it also made quite difficult work. You know, we we had to do perfect takes a lot and you know sometimes that would take a long time to get so there was a lot of rehearsal but the style really really amplifies the tension in the film and then of course the movie wouldn't work if the road line didn't act as well as um, all of you guys did and he's extraordinary but you've got to act opposite i mean that's not really there there's the visual effect there's that side of it all how was that for you this time around yeah, you know, this is the first time I really understood the complexities of FX and, you know, because I was, my, me and my performance were an intricate part of building, you know, a lot of this, um, uh, the lion's behavior, the, lion, the big lion fight. These were things that we really sort of mapped out. Um, the... We had a stunt performer and an animal impersonator who brought that sort of physical energy into it, uh, Owen. And you know, Owen and I would actually be fighting while he's got this incredible mask on and these, you know, like green screen suits. But that really layered, you know, the action. Um, we wanted to be observant of the dynamics of, of a lion attacking a human being, which, you know, we saw some footage of of real attacks and then phew, gnarly, you know. And we wanted to make sure that the audience got a sense of that in this film, um, and more than a sense of it, but really feel like this is actually happening to my character. I also uh, love that um, without banging the audience over the head with it, the film does uh, speak about poachers, how you know wildlife has been hurt in Africa, they're not as like a tent for the amount of lines that there were 100 years ago. I yeah. mean, this is a real this is a real problem and the movie kind of opens our eyes there too. Yeah, I think you know we felt a responsibility to sort of not villainize the lion, you know, it's called beast, but it's a metaphor for a few of the themes within this film. I feel definitely that, you know, just paying attention to what is actually happening right now and how lions end up in those situations. Lions don't typically attack humans. Uh, it's uncharacteristic, but a rogue lion will, would, have, it would have happened if a human tried to attack it or its pride or a surrounding um, animal group and the lion got caught in the crosshairs. So, you know, we didn't want to beat anyone over the head about it. This is not what the film's about, but it certainly felt a good way to make sure that we are like I said, observant of the truth. Because really the film is an entertaining um, piece of cinema that has depth to it and heart. But it's a thrill ride, right? Yeah, it's a thrill ride. It's really like designed to, you know, keep the, the audience on the edge of their seats. It's, um, it's scary. Um, I think it's got a lot of, you know, anxiety, you know, built into it because, you know, no one wants to be chased by a lion, especially one this size and stuff. But um, 
I think we really pulled off something that actually is a thrill ride. The audience can watch together and just be like, whoa, you know. And when you're watching it, you're also seeing the beauty, the mystery of Africa, right? Because the movie is stunning to watch. It is really stunning. The environment's beautiful. We caught light that, you know, it rarely gets caught on camera. You know, we shot so from about 4 a.m. to 7 where the light is just beautifully sun kissing the uh, environment. And then we shot so like from 3 to 5 where the light was even better. Anything else, the sun was a bit too harsh. So we got some really beautiful landscape shots. And, and um, we just wanted to make sure that the isolation of this family was really felt by the audience. And uh, following up on what you're saying, I think there was a great teamwork there between Charles and Will Packer uh, as producers. Um, what can you say of your relationship with Will? Oh, Will and I, you know, have made a few films together. We trust each other's instincts on certain things. And, um, you know, we wanted to make something that we hadn't made before. Uh, we've done thrillers before, but this was something that outside of our wheelhouse, essentially. Um, and it was, it's been incredible, a journey with Will. Um, we shared a lot of the decisions made, you know, we, we worked as a team. Bolt was very collaborative, really great. Um, I, I have to wonder, um, because you're so good in your role, <laughs> that I was wondering, what, what would Idris, how would Idris actually behave, Idris human being, if, if he were put in a situation like that? What do you think? I think, you know, like, if I was put in a situation like that, man, you know, I'd probably do what Nate does. But the truth is that I would not try and fight this thing. I'd try and run as far as I can. <laughs> I have no qualms about saying that. But the fact is, you know, if, if my, my children are being threatened, well, I'll fight. Um, could you ever imagine when you started off in this business that one day you'd be fighting a lion? <laughs> <laughs> no, I never. You know, like in the, the in the spectrum of filmmaking, this is pretty out there. But hey, I love it. Um, I think um, it's also important to say that this film is a lot of fun to watch and that it's perfect for this time of the year. What do you think? Yeah, I think this is one of those films that's you know it's it's popcorn ready. Um, you know, I hate to make comparisons, I'm not going to, but in a way Maverick really had that old school, I'm just going to enjoy myself and come out of there going, woo! I feel like this has got the same ingredients. And um, being such a special experience, and you know, I'm sure you were dying to see it with all the bells and whistles and how it's amazing it looks on screen. What did you think when you saw the film? completed and everything was put in there. So I haven't seen the full film. I'm actually, today is the day of the premiere. I'm going to see the full film tonight and I'm super excited. All right, well then, just to wrap it up, I wanted to ask, uh, just to um, say that it is important here without we talked about not hitting the audience with messages, but there is a message here that we should respect um, wildlife, we should respect nature, and there are consequences if we don't, right? Yeah, totally. You said it, you know, that, that, that um, message in this film is pretty prominent, but it's not, like you said, you know, we're not trying to make the film about that. It is important to understand that, you know, we, you know, took the time to understand what are the dynamics in this part of the world, what happens to these animals because of poachers, um, were there ways that we could help you know, uh, as, a, as a film company. But at the same time, we also paid attention to our footprint there, you know, not to disrupt the animals as well. Um, and the film, you know, the lion isn't a villain in this case for me. He is someone that's very similar to my character. Just to finish, the first thing you mentioned was how you like things different all the time. Now that you've done uh, this movie, which I think is extraordinary, how do you look back, Idris, at the whole experience now that um, Wow, I'm really proud of this so film. What did you learn, I guess, sorry. Yeah, I'm really proud of the film. I think there's, um, you know, there's a lot to be said about making an old school film that just, you know, feels real, feels fun, not fun, but thrilling and heartwarming. 
and not trying to be too overly complicated or too long. It is a piece of entertainment, and I think, you know, like I said, I think it's well executed. I watched a really great director pull together stuff that I knew nothing about in terms of special effects, and I learned a lot about, you know, how um, well that can be done and sometimes how badly that can be done, so that was great. You know, I, as a director myself, you know, watching the team pull this together was very, very special.